Rasulu ulul amri minkum. And always a reminder for myself, Ana abdukul ajeezu da'ifu, miskinu zalim wa jahal. And but for the grace of Allah Zabajal that we're still in existence. Alhamdulillah that these realities of the heavens they open infinite capacity of knowledges. And as we enter towards the last days the heavenly kingdom and the signs of the heavenly kingdom begin to open upon earth. For our tech people and the guys out there that are listening all over the world and an understanding these technologies have a very deep reality within the heavens. That the concept of a blockchain and the concept of a ledger that Zishan just brought up and what we call Lahul Mahfuz, a preserved tablet, Umul Kitab and Qur'an. That alhamdulillah the greatness of Prophet coming and telling us that everything is written, Kitab al Mubin, in a clear register, everything. And Imam al Mubin, there's an Imam who's Mubin, a clear register. And then Allah gives to us in, in Islam that everything is written. It was a deen that came and brought contractual law into this earth that write, iqra, read. Why? Because towards the end it's the last and the first of all realities but in the last of times it comes to bring the heavenly kingdom upon the earth. That everything is documented, nothing is left undocumented, nothing moves without it being upon a blockchain written. Now when you understand from the heavens not an ant's provision, not a planet's movement because you, you go from the smallest to the largest, Allah says, it's in a clear register. means digital contracts from what we understand. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. So that Allah says, nothing is moving. Not a provision is coming to an end, not a plant is moving, not a universe coming into existence but that it is clearly written on a contractual contract. Written, Kitab and Mubeen and then later Imam and Mubeen. But there's even a soul that represents that re reality. And we come then to dunya towards the last days and they start to introduce that reality through their system. That we want everything on a ledger. We want your money on a ledger. We want to give you currency on a contract, right? Why? Because it's an implementation of the heavenly reality. For Allah to give us an understanding, don't think anything you've done is not written somewhere. But they want to use it for nefarious purposes. They want to know how much you got, where it went and who you gave it to. But the fact that that system is coming into the earth 
is for those whom believe to understand the heaven, the kingdom of Allah is coming. And if you're afraid of the earthly powers, you should be more fearful of Allah that everything is on a contract, every movement of money, any asset, anything is moving with this contract. They put it onto a blockchain, it's locked. But those chains are only as good as the ledger that keeps track of everything, right? Because you say it's on a contract locked, they want to know for currency that you send the hundred dollars, we're going to now know where it went. But that's only as good as the ledger that keeps it. Means they have an accounting, a book or software that keeps track of all of these movements. What then for heavens? Well, Allah is la mafuz, everything is written. Then who represents these realities? That's why these tech guys they pick these up. As soon as you start talking these realities, they understand within their world what's happening. So when you deal with this world, you start moving money, then they say, it's not safe there. You have to put it in a wallet, a USB. You can't access the funds, you can see it, but you can't access it, move it, change it without that USB wallet. Well, we described before in other talks, that's like your shaykh. It's through a smart contract knowledge is being conveyed to you. You're not the owner, it's on a contract. As long as your shaykh is in distance with you through your madad and through your practices, you have access to these knowledges. If any time you lose your wallet, you lost your knowledges, you lost your funds. Why? Because you see that this world looks organized but very precarious. Okay, imagine you could have all your savings, it's not anymore in a store. It's on some device and they tell you then to move it to a USB <coughs> for storage. Now you lose that USB and you lose your key words to it. What Allah wants to show us? You can't break contracts from heavens, right? Oh, we don't have the, in the English here. Allah nafsi wa man awfa bi ma ahad wa inna man yaghudu ala nafsi. In the verse about the bayat, where's the, what's the verse of this say? 48.10. Zishan 48.10. What's the English? Those who swore fealty to you, O Prophet in fact swore fealty to Allah. Mom. The hand of Allah is above their hands, so whoever breaks his covenant breaks it to his own heart. And whoever fulfills his covenant that he made with Allah he will bestow on him a great reward. Nah, but the one whom breaks the covenant is like, what? Why can't you break? Because the conveyance of what's coming is like a contract written for you. It's like you throwing away your wallet, say, I don't want it, I'm going to throw the wallet away. Well along with the wallet came all the uloom and everything that was achieved. Means the smart contracts and these heavenly contracts are not something you break, not something you can break unless to the detriment of your soul. That's what these things are teaching, that's why these heavenly realities are teaching. So that to train people towards the heavens. Can you imagine a day is coming where your whole life may be on a USB drive, all savings, everything. And in a moment of carelessness you lose it unless you have your backup codes and words and some other sort of security procedures, you lose it. And then Allah is then giving to us these realities because this last one is the hand of power that comes to you 
and Allah not the, the bayad we wanted to give but the bayad that comes to you from heavens. That Allah's hand upon your hand and the one whom breaks that covenant breaks to their own detriment of their own soul and the one whom keeps it gets the reward to their soul. So they understood in their life this connection, this madad. They're always connected to that digital wallet, to their encryption. They cannot break it, they cannot lose it, they cannot put it aside and, and use a different wallet. They're locked to their shaykh, they're locked to that reality, they've been locked by their soul. So means the heavenly realities that are opening upon the earth are giving a lot of spiritual people a great insight into the heavens. Dunya people think that oh, this is just the greatest thing on earth, what is all these things like this? But spiritually, people, spiritual people involved within this realm are understanding that these are very much matching heavenly realities. We've described before that the Qur'an is the first sign of blockchain. They said blockchain instead of having everything in one location would be divided to 10,000 locations. That way you could never say, oh this one site went down and everything is lost. Blockchain stores a little bit of information everywhere. On everyone's computer has a bit of the information. Qur'an is the first of the blockchain reality, why? Could you take one book somewhere and change it? No, there's 900 million who've memorized and their hearts are called hafiz, guardians. Not memorizers but Allah called them hafiz and guardians because they guard the chain, they guard the Qur'an. From anyone trying to change even a letter within it, 900 million others will say, no, 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 this, somebody's altered the chain because the ledger's kept within the hearts of these people. So alhamdulillah that, that these realities show us a, a, a deep reality of what's happening upon this earth and why these things are happening upon the earth, all these technologies that are opening and the importance of these technologies. Importance in the sense of what they show us of, heaven, of the heavenly kingdom inshaAllah. What we got for tonight? <coughs> From last weekend's talks, not the color of paint and stuff. <laughs> As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Wa alaykum salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq is represented by the Sunnah of the Asa, thus preventing the entry of the snake with his holy qadam. Mm -hmm. Does this mean all major khalifas are an entryway to the heart of Prophet and serves as a protection? from negativity to the light and heart of Prophet What? <laughs> All the Khalifas? That following the Sunnah, <coughs> alhamdulillah, but what we gave specific is to whom we're speaking of. So why, why we don't just take what we speak of instead of going beyond that? That's always the thing is it was, it was, say uh, alif, lam, mim. Then somebody said, what about noon? But master what was been taught, understand what's been taught, understand the reality of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq, build that love and that connection and later you can go to different Sahabi Kiram and see what they want to teach you. But for now master this one through the connection of your shaykh to the, the realities that are being taught. So important to, to take what's being taught, begin to practice them and then we can ask questions regarding how to go deeper into that reality versus the just asking questions like, uh, what, what about this one and then how about Sayyidina Bilal and then how about… The, 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 so this… it just goes everywhere. So best to keep what we taught and say, how did we put this into our life? How did we implement these practices? How did you make a stronger connection with Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq as salaam? Did you build a, a deeper love and appreciation for this holy companion and uh, you carry the asa with you? So go deeper into these subjects by implementing them, practicing them 
And then inshaAllah said, shed more light on its realities. But yeah, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Wa alaykum as salaam wa Sayyidi how do we get purchased by Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq? <laughs> purchased by <laughs> Well you, you have to do good. <laughs> you have to have that uh, sincerity within our hearts to struggle. To struggle for the way, struggle in the tariqah, do the awrah, do the, the practices in which Allah begin to see the signs of sincerity and that you will be tested. That's why we, we started also with the other thing is that people are acting all wacky. And uh, do you really think that uh, if a little test like that comes, we gave the whole talks on Ashab al-Kaf that like a dog they're going to throw rocks at you. So uh, in our lives you will be tested. Allah will test you to see if you have good character, your interaction with people. Don't imitate being a woman on the internet and start uh, texting all the women in the tariqah and everyone on the internet. You, this, these are not righteous characters. So be who you are and be straight, be forward, deal with men if you're a man, deal with women if you're a woman and uh, do good things, righteous deeds, work on ourselves. So many different things that people should think of. And then they'll be tested and when they get tested they should have good character. And then Allah finds sincerity within the servant and the order comes from Prophet to begin to follow. One of the signs is then you must be watching this channel. Otherwise how could you possibly understand this if you weren't taught this and if you're taught this then Allah must have a reason for teaching you this. So it becomes self-evident. If you're inspired to listen to these types of knowledge, you've been inspired to tune into these types of knowledges, uh, lo and behold Allah is giving you a sign, this is what I want you to hear, right? Otherwise He could have led you to different channels. If this is what Allah wants you to hear then this is what we have to say. Perfect the character, follow this way and let this light and love of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq begin to enter within your heart, ask for his support and, and build that relationship. That relationship comes with the relationship strong with your shaykh. If you didn't know how to meditate and connect your heart with your shaykh, don't bother anything else, you're not going anywhere. So that has to be always the paramount. So that's why you get your meditation book, you make your tafakkur, make your connection. With your connection then you start to build the connection in the different uh, realities and the different teachings. Without the basis then you're building your house in the air, it's going to go all over the place. So that, that is a given, inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. What to do if when we think that shaitan has been ruining our du'as? Well, most likely he has been ruining your du'as. This is what we, we said about the other people too. The shaitan is inside so our fight is inside. This is why Sayyidina Omar is coming salam, and teaching that you know, <coughs> you don't need to make long du'as, you don't have to do things showing off for people. And that's why Naqshbandis they do things you know more, more quiet and more rapid because they don't need to show off for anyone. If you want to show off, show off to yourself at home alone, pray long. In front of people don't do that because then that's all become nafsani. We go places and they're literally praying for 30 minutes, long du'a, 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 long, long, long but then already fell asleep. So this is all for show, this is all from nafs. Uh, we can get everything done with a fatiha finished. If you, if you have the secret of Surah Fatiha it's enough for everyone, why well, have to make such long du'a? So that means they're trained in showmanship and making shows. And you know for shows don't go very far in, in the world of sincerity. So these are the practices that tariqah is teaching to us is be somebody more hidden in your practices and do your practices for Allah when you are hidden. And in public try to be sort of unnoticed inshaAllah. (coughs) 
Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh. Alaikum salam. Shaykh, if my spouse is not a practicing person, am I allowed to do the awrad and follow as I feel spiritually attracted and want to purify myself? If your spouse is not following, can you follow? Yeah, you do your zikr, your practices. If you're a female and your, your, your husband is not allowing you to follow, then you have to follow your husband and, and try to keep peace within your home. If, if, if what you're doing is not being noticed where it's not interfering with anything in the house, then you continue doing your practices and you connect with Hajj Hajamina, inshaAllah for ladies, they connect with a, a female personality and they take the, the lessons of the shaykh. And if the husband disagrees, then you have to follow your husband if he's Muslim. And if he's Muslim, you follow the imam of the house and, and try to get the imam to also try to be on a spiritual path that they follow, they feel comfortable following the tariqah. But you have to keep peace within your home. So they don't want people making uh, fights within their home and then difficulty. So you have to follow your husband inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam If we are unable to purchase the sunnah ring, is it okay to make a ring with the right intention for the purpose and wearing it? Anything is okay, it's with intention. So you can get the Pepsi Cola and put that medal on your hand and say, <laughs> Arabi, I don't have the means and, and don't lie to Allah that you have the means and you just don't want to do it. If you don't have the means then every amal is by intention. Then you put that Pepsi on your hand, say, Ya Rabbi let this to count for a sunnah ring and send me a real one and a servant of Allah will deliver you a real ring if you're sincere. There's no way that someone who wants to adhere to this love that Allah doesn't support them. So we have to have the sincerity within our heart, be true to ourselves that I don't have the ability to have a asa Ya Rabbi and I, I take even a a branch from a tree and uh, carry that, alhamdulillah that's sunnah. And if, if Allah wants something better, He'll send a servant to send it to you. So this is our faith and this is the immense blessings of the love of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. How can we help someone who is being continually attacked by negative energies? Forgive me for my ignorance. No problem, we have to help ourselves. So we said before now there's uh, negative energies is increasing, uh, increasing substantially because the advent of all these things that will be showing themselves that I think they put out a video recently on the cover showing that uh, people would see things and now begin to scream and yell about what they're seeing. And this is what was taught, we taught that these things will start to show themselves. As they show themselves their attack increases on people. So the negativity will begin to increase. That gives us the responsibility to increase our teachings, means that to increase our practices. Make the madad, make sure that you're making the madad. There's nothing more motivating than connecting your heart than you know the, the, these jinn chasing you and biting you. You know if you really believe in difficulties you start to see these difficulties then it's about you know not only playing things in the house but practicing, making the madad, doing the zikr, doing our salawats with our awrad. So that the energy within your heart is strong, the love of Prophet is strong and sincere and inshaAllah that love will save us. If we're imitating and faking the love and hoping one day something will ignite, well then the motivation will come for, for people to ignite their hearts. So e either way we, we have to reach to where we have to reach and there's a lot of negative people so if we can stay away from the negative people and, and to have the sanctity or sanctuary of our own, people living with other people whom are doing very negative practices. So it becomes a time in which we try to make a means for ourselves so that we can have our own space, build the protection of our space and have our own cave. It's hard to be protected in your cave when ten other people are in your cave. 
and they're doing all their own sort of crazy things, you know. So we don't know what kind of condition that is bringing upon people. But inshaAllah everyone has to make their du'a and, and ask Allah to provide for them an opening so that they can reach towards their safety, inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaykum Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam Can you please give examples of heavenly contracts in today's terms? What do you mean? Knowledges, right? We just, as soon as we talk, hmm. uh, a contract is going from our heart onto your heart. So how did you send like two dollars on a, on a Ethereum to somebody? It's instantaneous, right? I have your wallet address, I sent to Zishan, two, two Two dollars went there, pew, instantaneous. As soon as the associations talk, say, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, immediately contracts went out to everyone's heart. And the flowing of knowledges is flowing to them because these are, these are the currency of the heavens, knowledge. Knowledge is, is the wealth of the heavens. What, what does Allah uh, consider wealth? Does it care for cash? No, it's the knowledges. So, what's being dispensed is uloom. And this ilm, as soon as we even make nasheeds all on contracts into the hearts of people, it will be written that you made this nasheed and the audience online 3,000, 4,000 and those 4,000 all made 10 salawats for example, then this counts as how many? 40,000 salawats at that one time. That entire reward is written on the contract of everybody who tuned in. That's why Allah says in Qur'an, you will share in the good deeds of people and you share in the bad deeds of people. But the sharing of the good because we're talking about the good is this. So the 3,000 tune in, 4,000 tune in, so that's why we ask people, share, share the feed because if another 10 people come and make another 10 salawats, we all got a 100 uh, salawat reward. What is that reward on the contract in your heart? Can't be understood. How many tens of thousands of Allahs were mentioned in the zikr last night or coming in tonight? All of that on a contract on your heart written in your ledger, on your hisab. Allah describes throughout Qur'an, He's the one best khayr ashab, the best one to keep an accounting for you, the best ledger on earth. Only now you understand because then you look at the dunya ledger and you say, oh, Allah's been telling me about the ledger all along. I keep the best accounting, I mean not a single Allah will be missing from it, not a single one. And you get the multitude of everyone who recited. So in old days they would recite 100 people and they would count how many we got from 100 people. Now you're talking about 3,000, 4,000 views, everyone's ledger will be written that, right? Then the knowledges, what's the value of this haqqaiq of just alif, lam and meem? Means that knowledge will be deposited into everyone's wallet, everyone's wallet, everyone's wallet. But Allah's encryption is then the understanding for the words for your bayat. So in dunya they give you 12 words, 24 key phrases and say, don't you lose these phrases because if you lose it, <laughs> lose it, your entire wallet will be gone. Right? Allah's key phrase was what? Inna ladina you how many letters are those? Maybe 24. Inna ladina yubayna yubayyoon Allah. So Allah's key phrase is this word of bayat, Ayat al-Kareem, Surah 48 verse 10. That is the key for that ledger and Allah's warning is you don't break that. Don't break your covenant with Allah and Prophet and you can't break it with the shaykh because these are the knowledges that are coming into your heart. So you can't just say, I'm walking away with it. You walk all you want but the ledger will be broken and your keys will be lost. You cannot come back to claim that reality and be very clear, that's why we gave you description before that when you try to break away, Allah will inspire you to backbite the shaykh. Why? Because it's the only way to take your hisab back. Because you can't leave with the keys, you can't leave with these realities in your wallet and say, I'm, I'm just going. Some of these exchanges say there's a 60 day hold on anything you buy so we make sure that you're, you're really the customer and that you know it's yours. But Allah's is longer, 
You can't just take the knowledges and then bounce to something else, somewhere else or just leave entirely. Then you'll be inspired to backbite and your backbite means that all your hasanat will be given back to the shaykh and then all his siyat will be thrown onto you. And then when it happens people are like, oh shaykh this person is talking bad about you, well then that's a part of the covenant, don't worry about it. But it's immense, it's so, it's so amazing all these contract things and all these realities. How Allah is, is everything is moving in these realities, everything is written and uh, we're seeing it now manifest in dunya and alhamdulillah this is a sign that last days are here, inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi will the Ottoman Empire and the Khilafah be re-established this year as there are rumors about the hundred year completion of World War I contract? Jeez, I wouldn't go anywhere saying anything about what day anything is going to happen. But what I can tell you is that you should meditate so that you see Imam Mahdi this year, right? Everyone has to meditate so that they see Imam Mahdi because what's needed is, is to spiritually be with them. We don't uh, wish for the destruction of this earth and uh, all its calamities. So. Uh, everything that's been promised to us is a spiritual reality that if, if you believe in the last days then we have to make the connection and, and make our connection strong and then feel the connection with Sayyidina Mahdi And that's why they describe tonight the uh, holy companions, make your connection, feel their presence. Then who needs the destruction of the world to reach their reality? So it means the spiritual is important. Now giving a date and saying this is this, that would be foolishness to say what date is and what's happening. Because Allah is the best of planners, all we know is that nobody's ready. So if it comes billions will be dead and billions are unprepared and don't make their connection, don't make their tough accord. And these are all the, the realities for protection. So how, how will people be protected if, uh, if they're not even trying to connect? It would be disastrous. But we pray Allah help and inspire people and uh, that people begin to build themselves inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Ya Shaykh Sayyidi wa rahmatullah. Can we put our sunnah turban everywhere we go, not for showing off but because it protects us and you have ordered us madad ya Sayyidi? Yeah, I don't think we ordered anything <laughs> that uh, the sunnah of the turban has its place and its adab and it's not everywhere on the streets. So walking down the street, going to donut shop, people are inappropriately dressed and people looking at you, what are you doing here with this? So uh, everything has its, its majesty. And everything has its hikmah. Ilma laduni wa hikmati bi salihin are two friends that come together. So to have a knowledge and no wisdom then you're, you're something wrong with you. So the, the concept of knowledge and wisdom is important that the, the knowledge of the holy turban immense and then I should keep the respect of where I wear it and uh, who will be present at that time so that they don't say anything bad, they don't say anything inappropriate. And that I use it for my ibadah my worshipness. Going to a mawlid event, go for my salah, go for jummah, alhamdulillah. And then people have to work. We got an email that somebody's following, meditating and now deciding not to do anything. That's not our teaching, that's absolutely not the teaching of any shaykh. Mawlana shaykh described that everyone has to work. That if you're not working then your provision is not uh, good for you means you're poisoning yourself. You have to go out, work and struggle and strive. If you have no work, your work is in Allah's way, do khidmat. Go out and give food and, and be of service because Allah provided a provision for you. Now go out and, and live a life of service. Can you tell your parents, I'm sitting and following the shaykh and meditating and I'm not to go out anywhere? That's a lie. That's not anything that the shaykhs have ever said because this is not the way of Sayyidina Muhammad and we don't take from governments and, and steal from government people and then sit at home and do nothing. That we take our provision and we earn our provision and if you take government money go out and help the poor. Allah inshaAllah will forgive you. If you take government money and just sit and do nothing 
then that's, that's not a, a clean provision, that's not a clean lifestyle. So tariqah comes and teaches us to, to be active and to, to participate and to do everything and not to fear anything. You're not uh, fearful and locking yourself up and hiding but you, you're supposed to participate in life and, and to, to do what you have to do, do your ibadah, do your worshipness if you're a man. So if you're a man you have to do your worshipness, if you're a woman stay home and, and, and guard your family, you're not supposed to be out. If you're a man you go out and do your work inshaAllah. Days are dangerous, women shouldn't leave and shouldn't uh, go against what Prophet has asked of them and that becomes a danger for them inshaAllah. But they can do whatever they want inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.